Jack and Betsy Northam. Uh, there's no more people qualified to talk to you about uh, doing Mount Whitney right and, and hiking that uh, ominous, iconic uh, mountain. Um, and then we're going to have a raffle. So uh, we're going to go for about an hour here, and there's questions and answers at the end. And enjoy the beer, enjoy the, the evening. Uh, if you see Cameron or anybody from Phoenix, thank them for, for uh, making their uh, facility available to us. And we will have a raffle at the end, so make sure you get your raffle tickets. Jack Northam, Crazy Jack. Take away. Thank you, everybody. I do want to thank John, uh, John Mead. Where John had 816 stores. It was so exciting for us to travel around and visit the stores and do our presentations. And we trying to close the last store, it was kind of a heartache. It was, uh, oh my gosh, now we're. So, hop on and uh, he told me, he asked, called, and said, Are you interested in doing a Whitney talk? And I said, Yes, I am. We still are. And he said, well, how about doing it in Helix? No, well, we'll give it a try. So I was about a year ago. So here we've been ever since. And having a lot of fun. Uh, it's fun because you come here to get some tips on Whitney. It's fun when you meet us on top of the mountain and say, we came to your talk, and that's why we made it. Because you gave us some tips. That's what's rewarding for us to hear that. So please, as we talk, ask any questions that you want, as long as it pertains to Mount Whitney. I can tell you how to slide into second base, but that wouldn't do any good. And I can tell you how to put a roof on. I know that's not going to do any good, but I can tell you how to get off Mount Whitney. And I think that's what you're here to hear. So if I'm blocking vision, excuse me. I'm moving over. Is that okay? Is that so start with, yeah, Mount Whitney. What is it? Where is it? Well, it's the highest mountain in the world for you today. So thinking, wait, 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 how many of you have been on top of Mount Whitney? Yes, yes, sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. You're checking up on me, so if I make a mistake, you're going to know that. Okay. Um, how many of you actually tried to hike Mount Whitney and didn't make it to the summit? Good. So we've got John's. <laughs> no, no, no. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> the failure rate, is, I'm not going to call it a failure rate, it's just, it's not to the summit. But that doesn't mean it's a failure of a day. It means you probably had a great experience up until a point where you decided it was time to turn around. Uh, maybe the weather turned you around, maybe your body turned you around, maybe your mind turned you around. Whatever it is, that was probably the right thing to do. It's when people do not turn around, and they should have when we get in trouble. When I say we, it's the search and rescue people that have to come to, to help people get down because they didn't make the right decision. So we want you to have enough information you can make that right decision when it's time, if it is time. So the highest mountain is 14508. There was a guy on Facebook just yesterday who had a t-shirt. He wanted a t-shirt, it's 14505. And I wrote underneath it, if it was right at elevation, I'd ask for the t-shirt. It's pretty much, it's, it's a little confusing at the moment about what is the elevation. If you Google it, I think it's going to say 505. If you get on something else that's true, it says 508. Anyway, it's going to change. It has been changed. If you, my shirt says 497. It's going to change. We're probably going to go back down a little bit. It's named after Josiah Whitney. Josiah, he was a state geologist, the director of the first geology survey of Mount Whitney. The trail was built in 1904. Think about that for a minute. 1904. How many billions of years has Whitney been there? And we've only been on it since 1904. That's something I think is to be respectful of the fact that they did build us a trail. I dare to challenge you now and say, would we build a trail now? If we just now found Mount Whitney, no trail, do you think we could build it? I don't think it would happen. <laughs> Look at our gas prices. Look at everything else around. If we're going to spend the money to build a trail to go up top of Mount Whitney, duh, no. <laughs> the Summit Hut was built in 1909. I think that's very important too because it was Smithsonian, UCLA, USC, maybe collaboration to explore the outer space, the sun, the moon, the stars. Well, it all it does now is sits there and half of it's with rangers. 
for for special reasons, maybe uh, emergency reasons. The other little part of it is for us to go in. Just don't go in there when the weather's bad, folks. Okay, let's, we'll get there. All right, yes. There's different routes to get on the get up the mountain. Most of us will go the main trail. Main trail is a 22 mile round trip. Trip. It starts at 18,000, no, 8,360 feet and ends up five away. There's also the main Mountaineers route, which is a different route, still ends up on the top, half the distance, but more challenging. You have to be a little sharp about your, your third class climbing skills. There's the climbing route. Anybody here want to climb Mount Whitney? Climb, climb Mount Whitney. Has anybody here climbed Mount Whitney? Come on, put that arm up there. This little lady here did climb the face of Mount Whitney. I didn't. I said I was going the scenic route, safe and scenic route. Uh, from the west, yeah, you can do High Sierra Trail, John Rear Trail, Army Pass, Cottonwood Pass, Bruce Arch Pass. There's other good avenues from the other side. To get. Most people come from the east, that's the east side, that's the easy, but it's really more straight up, off of Highway 395. Yeah, you need a permit. And don't ask me how you get one, because I don't know anymore. I used to know, when I got on the phone today and told the lady, I don't have a clue what's going on with Red Cross Yellow. But, all I can tell you is they give you 100 day permits. Day permit is a one day. 12 hour, 24 hour day, midnight to midnight, to do to do Whitney in. If you can get one, call me, I'll come with you. Okay, on me. Okay? And again, R E R E C dot go, recreation dot go. It's the only way you're gonna get a permit. The legal way. The legal way. Okay, so there's this thing called Whitney permit share. That's not legal, but you're out there. And you have to print your own permit. And to do that, you have to get the wait until it comes up and it's going to give you the opportunity. It's like a week before you print it out. And that's all I can tell you. So I'm, I'm, after that, it's new for me. You do need a little bit of equipment. The day pack is recommended. Hiking poles, maybe so. Hiking boots or trail runners, that's up to you. Hiking socks, one or two pairs. All that stuff is individual. Individual things that you decide on what you're going to do. I would assume that most of you have done some kind of a hiking before you would want to try doing that with. You would learn from your own experience. If you did Cows Mountain, uh, whatever it is, Alcohol Mountain, hard, Alcohol Mountain. But you would learn, well, these are not the right socks, okay? I do need, I do need boots, the runners aren't working. But you do not experiment on Whitney. You think you're going to have a very successful day. Equipment again, water bottle, hydration. This is very important, hydration. Now, personally, I started, when we first started doing Whitney, uh, 25 years ago for me, uh, it was a hydration system, you know, the ladder. Suck it up, just I don't know how much water you got. Well, I've changed that now, it didn't take very long to figure that out, but I wanted to go with a water bottle, not just Maybe one bottle at a time, we'll take two or three when you need them, but there's a lot of water to cross. Purification, we recommend it. The rangers recommend it, I don't do it. We won't recommend it to you because we don't want anybody to get sick from not purifying your water. But this is the kind of talk that you do not do what I do because it won't help you. I want to be able to help you be safe. So, but purification, recommended. There's a lot of great new methods now. Stiff. Stair to pin, I think, is very popular. Ultra blue light, spinning around in your bottle, and you got water purified. You need a flashlight. Chances are, you're either going to start in the dark, or you're going to end in the dark. That kind of a height. So you need either a headlamp, or a flashlight, whatever you prefer. We recommend you take a first aid kit. It doesn't have to be gigantos, just enough in case you somebody trips and has got some scrapes. 
if I don't draw blood, it wasn't a very good height. Yeah. And then uh, a space blanket. What, why a space blanket? Because let's say you had an accident or somebody else had an accident and you came by them. And they're not moving. They're not going anywhere. That kind of an accident is prohibited from continuing on the trail. It's going to take a search and rescue type of to come and get them and help them out. In the meantime, it takes a long time for search and rescue to get to you. So you want to make sure you have enough with a space blanket, the clothes that you brought along, that you could actually spend, if you had to, a night on the trail. And so, not that I want that to happen to anybody, but it's important. It's important. Okay, Vince? Also, you're going to get a wag bag. You don't know what a wag bag is? It stands for Waste Alleviation Gel. We used to have solar toilets a long time ago. They took them out. We used to be able to go behind a rock in 1904. That was cool. Not anymore. If you find a rock that somebody else hasn't gone to, good luck on that one. Take the wag bag and use it if you have to. Chances are your body's going to say it's time for a wag bag. And the most important thing about a wag bag is to bring it back. Not to leave it on the trail. Inevitably, you'll see them stacked up one, two, three at a time. Who do they think is going to come and get that? I can't figure that out. The rangers have to get it. How would you like to have that for a ranger job? Well, oh, i got to go pick up wag bags. No. Just leave it, bring it back with you. Double, triple, quadruple, book, bag it up and get it in your pack. It's not, not going to kill anybody. Just bring it back. Sunglasses, absolutely. Chapstick, absolutely. Sunscreen, absolutely. Or a hat. Thank you for the hat. You know, uh, you're out in the sun. Not much shade on this trip. Not much shade at all. No questions so far. Zipping right along, we're doing good. Hello? Yes. Is that a sanitation set, or not a sanitation, a purification system that you recommend? Like the squeeze kind? Well, I, I, I think the Steri pin is the one that we have, right? And Betsy's used it on some of her cross country trips. You know, where you got a little stream and you look at that water and go, Ugh. But no, Steri pin are very efficient. And it's easy to do. It takes 90 seconds to. Put that, put your bottle in there, fill it, and spin it out in 90 seconds. It's the same. It's the same process that Coca-Cola uses when they purify their water. So it's proven. And Kurt Wittberg, our good friend, who was here before, prior to us, and will be after us. He takes it all over the world. It's very good. How many pills? How many pills? I don't. I'm sorry. Iodine pills? I've never used it, but you can. Iodine pills, yes, leaves a taste. But something, something takes something. Because even though you want to cross some really good looking water, you don't want to take a chance. Plus, um, clothes are optional. Well, not really, but I missed out on the day when there was a couple of moodies doing the trail. But Larry works best. You know, this is the standard hiking stuff. It doesn't matter if you're doing cows or whatever. This is just, you do not wear cotton in underneath or against your skin unless you plan on being cold. Think about Whitney as you're, drop, you're, you're going up in elevation. Did you know that every thousand feet the temperature drops around three to five degrees? So you could be in Lone Pine at the elevation of 3,700 feet and it could be 100 degrees. It's not 100 degrees on top of Mount Whitney. You're lucky if it's 65. You're lucky if it's 60. Every thousand feet, you lose three to five degrees in air temperature. But as you hike, you're perspiring against your body, against your clothing. And so cotton is not the right thing to wear there. We actually wear icebreaker. Marina wool. It's marina wool. They thought, wool? Ooh, I can't wear wool. Now this is, this is different. This is, you know, it's wool. And the other thing is, men, it doesn't, well, I better not say men either, but it doesn't smell. 
Nobody orders coming out popular for through hikers to wear to wear one for a week or two. Uh, insulation layer. That's pretty important. That's your fleece, something that you're going to keep you warm when it's when it's time. You got a raincoat or a windbreaker. I kind of do the same one twice or the same thing. It's either, either the wind's blowing, I put it on. If it's raining, I put it on. Something that keep you from getting all soaking wet. Long pants for people that like to wear long pants. I wear shorts. Two hundred times I've worn shorts. That's why part of the part of my name, Crazy Jack, it kind of tags along with what I do and how I do it. And then uh, you know, gloves and a hat, something to keep your head warm or it's going to get cold. The wind can blow. They can be absolutely brutal. You can get to a certain part of the trail. It's fine. Ten steps later, holy smokes! Now the wind's coming at you and it's freezing. So you have to be prepared for that stuff. Preparation, that's up to you. Have a positive attitude though, it doesn't, it's not much fun to get, to try to get in shape when you're not enjoying it. If it's a, if it's a burden on you, if it's something you don't really want to do, you won't be, won't be very successful with it. So if you look at the outcome of what it takes to get in shape enough where you can do with me. Now it doesn't mean you can just run up and down the trail and not feel a thing. I've got a couple at the Wendy Portals. The Portals is the, the base of the Mount Tenders when the trail starts. And I said to the nice lady, you're going to hike it? She says, yeah. My husband and I are going to ride it. I said, well, good. What time are you going to start? She says, midnight. I said, okay, that's fine. Be pretty dark for a while. So, she, the next day, maybe the day and a half, next two days later, saw them again. I said, hey, how was the hike? She said it was great. We started at midnight, and we ended at midnight. I said, well, congratulations. That's a long, long day. But you, you, made what, you did what you came to do, and I hope you feel good about it. She said, it was hard. But it's funny how you just, you know you can't stop, just come, come to a complete stop, that doesn't work. So, proud of her husband, uh, they, they completed that in 24 hours. You get in shape anyway, you know how to get in shape. What does it take? Does it take aerobic exercise, stationary bicycles, stairs? Whitney is nothing but stairs. After you get past Lone Pine Lake, even before Lone Pine Lake. And some of those stairs are not little five-inch stairs, they're big stairs. It gets old after a while. But uh, go up and go down. So far what we talked about is getting in shape to go up. You realize how hard it is to go down? It's hard. Your body's tough, thank you. Your body's tired. Gravity's pushing you down. Those steps that were like this are not like this. It's a long ways down. So that's where you got to work at that. Then go find some hills to work on. Uh, did my first Cowles Mountain just a couple of weeks, about a month or so ago. My very first time. I know Gary, Gary's done it 10,600 and some times, literally. But that was my first Cowles Mountain. And it's good, it's, it works. We go to Mission Trails, work out at Mission Trails. There's a lot of Undulations in there, a lot of dirty dirt dirt, just like you find in the river on the Whitney Trail. But it's something that simulates where you're going to be going. You can get in shape right here in San Diego proper. The only thing you can't do is get acclimated in San Diego proper. You cannot get acclimated to the Whitney in Mount Lagunas. That's where we're in the glitch. But you can get in shape here, no problem. We'll talk about acclimation. Hey, that's be ready for a long day. It's a 22-mile round trip. But forget that when you start. If you, when you start out, don't think about 22 miles. That's long. We've got some mileage chart things that we're happy to get you out. But what it does is it breaks that hike hike into sections. It gives you a starting section of Lone Pine Lake. Then it goes to the outpost camp, and then it goes to Trailside Meadow. 
break that thing up so that you know where are you at. I'm at five miles, I'm at six miles, I'm at eight miles. When the trail crashed, wow, get in there. But if you keep thinking 22 miles, 22 miles, that would be hard to do. Very hard to do. Acclimation, yes. Okay, we just, we just mentioned that. Everybody's different in how they acclimate, how fast it takes. There are some folks that never can get acclimated to the elevation 14508, just not within their bodies. Something's wrong, or something's happened. But for the most part, you're not going to feel perfect, but you're not going to feel like you got AMS and all that stuff and, and get so sick that you can't stand up. And, but you're going to feel elevation. You're going to feel it. There is one third less air at 14.508 than there is right here at sea level. One third. That's where the body has to make an adjustment. You have to accumulate more red blood cells. You have to slow down what you're doing and understand what's happening to your body. But if you do what we say a four day trip would be you drive from here, I guess you live here somewhere, to Lone Pine, get up to the Whitney Portals. Now we're at 8360. You have to be at least 8,000 feet elevation to really truly start acclimating. You can get higher than that. You can go up to 10,000 too. But 8,000 will help. And when you start doing that, you just don't, you don't have to hike. If you want to hike, you can the, the first day, maybe five miles up to, up to Lone Pine Lake and back. No permit required. Gain a couple thousand feet. It will help. It will slow. The day before you're going to hike, we don't recommend hiking at all. We recommend know where you're going to park your car. Know where the trailhead is. Know where the restrooms are. And hydrate yourself. Alcohol is not hydration. Water, vitalize, something, Gatorade, something that helps the body. Okay, but it's important that you do hydrate, and the day before it is really just a rest day. It, it, if you're not in shape the day before, or two days before, you're not going to be in shape the day before. I can't tell you how many times we have people running up the trail, going to Lone Pine Lake, if I get up enough courage, I'll say, uh, hi, uh, what you doing? Oh, well, we're going to Lone Pine Lake. I said, are you getting ready for Whitney? Oh, yeah, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. At 1 o'clock in the morning, it's tomorrow. They don't understand how much energy they're putting out already to get to Lone Pine Lake. You do that two days before, then it gives you a nice rest. Because the night, you're going to spend the night before you hike at 1 o'clock in the morning, forget it. You might as well stay up and play cards. You will not sleep that night. So rest the day before, right? There is Horseshoe Meadow, which is a drive, it's a, it's a car drive, 10,000 feet. Beautiful Horseshoe Meadow, south of Whitney. Just gorgeous. Paved road all the way now. Mammoth, you know about Mammoth, 79, 89. Portals again, 83. These are the kind of mountain sicknesses that you get. AMS, probably most of all. As Kurt Wetberg would say, there's a lot of things you can do to remedy that problem, but the main thing you do is go down. Once you start to get that head pounding, and you're feeling something's not right, you're not hungry anymore, you're not drinking anymore, continually to go up is not a good idea is to go back down. And it's amazing how good you will feel when you get back down to 8,000 feet. It's like, hey, what happened? I wasn't, I'm fine now. The change is rapidly. But continue on going up. If you're hurting at 10,000 or 11,000, you got a long ways to go. I just read on Facebook, this gentleman helped out a lady and then two other guys came to help too. She had been on the summit, she'd come in back down, she got to trail crest, and she started really feeling bad. She stopped somewhere just below trail crest and stood there, stopped for three hours. 
finally, this guy shows up and says, you okay? He says, no, I don't feel so good. He recognized AMS right away. Me and two other gentlemen that showed up helped her go down. So we went two miles from where she was stopped to Trill, Trill, Trill Camp. They'd already been in touch with search and rescue. They said, get her to Trill Camp. We'll get a helicopter there. It took them five hours to get her to Trill Camp. That's how bad it can get if you let it. She went to the hospital. She's okay. I went on a search and I went on a rescue myself with Doug Thompson, the owner of the store. Same kind of thing, the lady was coming to us on the trail. Doug recognized, started moving her down. Got to get her down. So, even though this is only 14, we're not talking Whitney, we're not talking, you know, the Ken lady, we're not talking bad breast or nothing. This is just 14, 508, and it happens. So you got to recognize that. Turn around and go down. That mountain will be there long after we're gone. And hopefully you'll have another opportunity to go back up. Or pretty hard to turn around. I know that. How about medications like uh, Diamox? Diamox, if you want it. Uh, I've never used it. People have tried it. Or some people have come up with it. It's a diuretic, obviously. It makes you pee a lot. It makes you, your, your, your taste buds go wacko. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's, he took, had to, when she did kill him and draw, she didn't take it, but she had it with her. That was part of the rules. So yeah, that's an alternative. Personally, I feel like I can, I can get there and do the 40 plan, get activated enough where I'm comfortable. The night before, well, it's a long night. Uh, it could be either at the campground or it could be down in town, whatever, whatever you prefer. But the things that you can do to help yourself, organize and check, pack your backpack, pack your food, lay out your clothes, decide on a start time. If you're with a group, it gets harder. If there's two of you, probably chances are you can figure it out. If you get more of you, it gets harder to figure it out. Uh, the best hiking group is one. And the best hiking group is two. <laughs> We hike together, we know what we're doing together, but not everybody hikes the same speed. And so there's things you have to decide on. One night we were staying down in town and it's two o'clock in the morning and I know we're wrestling, I can hear her wrestling. Hi, are you awake? Well then let's go. Why do we have to wait till four? Let's just go. So Everybody's different. Everybody seems to be leaving now about one or two or three. Just remember, it's in the dark. As long as you're capable of hiking that well in the dark, and you know it's going to be an extra long day, maybe not longer than it should be, but still, it's okay to do that. Uh, but you're going to decide that. And then aim to be on the top by noon. Why don't we say that? On the top by noon. Well, it's kind of been a proven fact in the tipping English. Does not always happen? When the thunderstorms come through, they're going to come around and usually blitz the mountain from 12 o'clock on. Not always, but there have been many cases when they come in in the morning. But usually, you can even start out on a clear day, clear, and then three hours, four hours later, there it is. It's materialized, and now we're sitting in a possible thunderstorm. Of a not to scare anybody here, but did anybody else hear about the lady that got zapped today in L.A.? She did. And that's really sad. In her 50s, two dogs, dead on the spot. Whitney is not the place you want to be when there's lightning, thunder. I've been, I've been on it in the rain. We've been on it in snow flurries. We've been on it in hail, wind. But you don't want to be on it when there's light. And if we say, if you've been to the top and you got there by noon, you have a good opportunity to be descending if this stuff is still moving in, rather than walking into it. Not a, not a good idea at all. <coughs> not a good idea. I've been on the top, Ace and I've been on the top and my hair was standing up from oxygen hissing. Betsy was on the top after her East Face climb. She's going to sign the register and put it to the organize. Make the rope, they got to get it down. 
how many minutes later the bolt struck the top? About 15. 15? Very close. People that have been in the hut, the rock hut with the metal roof, the lightning strikes, the yes, needless to say, dead on the scene, sued, sued the Forest Service for having the hut there in the first place. But you've got to be sensible about this. Whitney's not a good place to be around when there's thunder and lightning. Okay, next fence. They have a high penalty breaking into sections. We talked about that. Carry enough water to get to the next water. That could be maybe just an exaggeration, but the point is you cross water just about eight different times on the main trail. It doesn't make sense to take a full bladder all the way up there without even getting water. That, what is the heavy thing you're going to carry? <coughs> water. It is. So if you're willing to know that there is water in front of you, that you can drink, yes. Is that water year-round? Well, I've never done it year-round. No, when there's snow, it's snow. There. Yeah. But, but I'm like glad you asked the summer, question. The, there's, there's the, last water. Water, the last water that you will encounter right this minute is on Switchback 24. Switchback 24. And there's a snow field that's up above to the left. It runs right out, down on the trail, it crisscrosses the trail, it runs across the trail, down the trail. That is my last water. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I've never filtered that one. So I take a bottle there, or two bottles there, fill it up. That's roughly mile six and a seven. Six and three quarters? Six and three quarters. <coughs> so from there, you got to go to 11, mile, and then back down to that spot. That's the last water that you'll really use, or can you? Yes, John? As you, as you go up, though, in the subjects, as you go up, where are the water, best water spots as you go up? Yeah, it's, yeah, if you're paying attention, you'll see it on the trail, but there is a nice big rock between you and the next trail that zigzags and it goes back and forth. It comes out of the right there, and that's the, that's the best spot to get in, because it's coming right out. But before you get to the switchbacks, we'll, yeah, we'll show slides. Describe the water situation. Oh, I will. I'll show you a picture. Yeah. Right. Good. Uh, ask people: Is the switchback? Is the water running on the switchbacks? Yeah. So when you're when you're hanging around the day before, especially when you see the people coming off the trail, just walk up and say, "Is there water running on the switchbacks?" They'll know what you're talking about. If they say no. Well, then I changed my whole plan. I don't plan on that when I plan on mile five. Trailside Meadow, it's called. I'll show you that picture to get my water. Because I, I need to know that. If not, it's too late if I pass it up and find out it's not running. It will not run in October very much. It dries up. And this year, since there's not that much snow, hasn't been that much snow, it's probably going to dry up even earlier. Than normal. But normally, in the morning time when you're headed or the middle of the night, it's fairly running, turn around and come back in the afternoon, it's flowing strong. Yes, sir? My friend is doing the PCT and they have a website that they can go to that says what water sources are based on the time frame that you're there. So, is there something similar to Whitney? I don't think so. Not to my knowledge. But if you you can go on, there's a website, or there's the uh, Whitney Portal message board website. There's a map that you can get at that store, and it shows you where the water comes through. But just knowing the fact that you can get water quite frequently, it, it, it really relieves the burden of how much do I take. Everybody wants to take too much, to, honestly. I think one of the first times we did the mountaineers route, I carried a bladder all the way up and all the way back and still had water to spare. But the problem with the bladder is I have no idea how much I have. That's why I like to do the bottle. I know what it is. And I can put my electrolytes in the bottle and then I can clean the bottle. It's pretty hard to clean it when you have a bladder. But still, everybody has their own method of doing things. We're going to show slides. Then there'll be water crossings, and you'll be able to get an idea of where the water is. Okay, so let's, let's 
please. Jump again. Uh, you start to hike with the pole. Best if you drive your car up from one line to get out of the car. It feels chilly. It just naturally will. Uh, take a minute to shed layers if you don't overheat as you get started. Okay, Pick a pace that works for everyone in your group. It's best to start out slow. People tend to start out way too fast. The easiest part of this trail is the first two and a half miles. They go way too fast. If you're going to run it, that's another story. When I, when I blitzed it, see how fast I could go, I just took off and didn't know if I'd get the one. I did. That's, my pace is not everybody's pace. If you hike a thousand feet an hour, you're doing really, really well. Okay, drink and eat, even if you don't feel like it. Remember, the summit is only halfway, now comes the hard part. You see, and we'll see you in the mountains. So, we're going to show you a few pictures, if that's okay. We've got a few minutes left. So, this is a picture taken from an F-18 Hornet. Interesting. Whitney, the right foot. That little, that, that's the right foot. And actually, the trail is here. It's here, it's here. That's called Iceberg Lake. Cars down there, the portals. This is called Consultation Lake. Consultation Lake. Okay, picture. Now we're on the road. We're heading up the road to Long Pine, up to the, out of Long Pine. We're heading up to see Mel Whitney right there. A lot of people think, oh, there it is. No, that's Long Pine Peak. Because it looks higher. It isn't. This is Whitney. Okay. Every now and then you might hit a pop on the rock. Don't worry. Just drive around them. This was a winter shot. They did come down. Obviously, they from right here. Big guys. And then every now and then, you might have a complete road closure. But you don't need to worry about driving around. That was, again, that was a winter time. A couple, three years ago, I guess it was. And, yeah, they had, they had to seriously work hard to get that stuff off of the road. Lasting and pushing and... Thank heavens they got it looking for us. This is with me in January 3rd, 2004 in the winter time. This is it. This is the pond it, 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 it for the, it's the store, the Whitney Portal store. This is the sign that says Whitney Portal store. Pick the Garrett Hiker Parking. That's a little bit confusing, a hiker parker. parking. Do not park around the pond if you're going to do a, a Whitney Summit. It says they. Day hiking, it's wrong. That's not for you. It's for people that come up from one time and come up and want to spend an afternoon or get out of the heat and, and hang around at the store, at the store and the, and the pond. But people take advantage of that and park the cars. Uh, every now and then the wind can blow pretty hard. Snap that tree right off. Oh, and yeah, there's bears. Hey, we're going to bear country. This is bear country. This is where they live. Be fair to them. Do not leave anything scented in your car. Because they will go to find their car and they will tell your car open to get wherever it is. Even if it's a cooler that doesn't have anything in it. They're, they're trained to know now. It happens every day almost. There's bears come out in the evening time. And this is where they live. Treat them with respect too. That's Doug Thompson and his wife Erlene. They own, own the store now. It's, I think it's going on 29 years. Yeah, just a wonderful couple to do anything for you. There's a sign. That's the main Whitney Trail sign. Yes. And here it is in the snow. So we've only hiked up to this far in the, in the snow. So we haven't done the whole trail. Obviously in the snow. But that's he's laughing because it's cold. This is the, uh, there's three buildings like this. If the portals, two restrooms on each building. It's, it's, this is right across from the trail head. So it's easy to find. And again, when you bring down your rag bag, that's the container, this one, this one, that it goes into right there. Not in the trash can, but in this container for wake rag bags. If it's trail head start, okay. This is a good water crossing. This is a first start, get started with water crossing. This, and you hit the John Muir Trail sign. Okay. 
Oh, you, every now and then you'll run across the pond here. We threw a lot of them there. They're beautiful. And then there's a grouse, like a chicken. They uh, don't get in its way though. They don't. They don't like people. But just looking back down from the Long Pine, the trail, the Long Pine Lake. There's the road we just drove up on. Flowers, Betsy knows them all. Betsy. Uh, Applegate pink brush. Corn lilies, Western Eupatorium, Sierra Angelica. These are wildflowers, okay? Oh, 11 logs, four steps, four steps, four steps, five steps, four steps, 11 steps. It's 11 logs. We're flat. Why are you left? Do you have fun on them? No, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lone Pine Lake. On the day, two days before, if you go up, that's fine. You can get this close. On your on your hike day, no. But you're too close now. You have to get off the trail to get down and see that. Uh, now you're in the zone. Whitney zone. That means that permit that you have to have. Very important. More flowers, Betsy. Uh, red heather. Columbine. Friday Mountain. Shooting star. Shooting star. Yes. You're up in, if you're lucky enough and see, you might see these Miley Parkers. Three, they go way, way back years ago. That's three, okay? Then you cross another water. This would be the water that I would drink straight out of the mountain. This is where it comes out of, right here. Uh, now there's a log bridge across it, a one log. But that's the water I drink without purifying. Breakers check it all the time. But don't tell them I told you that. <laughs> you, you do what you feel like you need to do. This is about mile three and a half. Okay, next one. Quickly, cross this again. This what? is going into Alpo's camp, where there's camping. This is seen, this is big, what we call Big Park Park. Beautiful Alpo's camp is right here. The trail is over here. And right there is Trail Crest. So if you know what you're looking, you can see things like that, okay? Again, outpost camp, some campsites, you walk right through here. Four big rocks to cross, or five, that's, that's the water coming out of Lake Mirror. And it is uh, out the end of outpost camp. What's the mileage of here? Four miles, that was like 3.75 maybe. This is, four mile marker is right on the other side of Deer Lake. Camp there years ago, they can't anymore. Uh, last tree, last tree. Uh, this is Trailside Meadow. This is one of my favorite spots. Flowers, it's a meadow. That's one I five. Water to drink. Anyway, it comes out of Lake Consultation, most of it does. It's good water to drink. And this is what it looked like way back July 13th, 2006, and there was a lot of snow that year. It's sneak, sneak, sneaking underneath and coming down. Mile five. Don't look for it, you can't see it anymore. It's kind of bleached out now. That's leaving Trailside Meadow. Okay, then the next picture is, oh my gosh. Lovely couple. This is our 50th land anniversary shot. We're going up to the mountain for a little kid. But that's called the Alpen Globe. Alpen Globe. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. And that's, by the way, that's Whitney. <laughs> okay, that's uh, Consultation Lake, and this is Trail Camp. The notorious Trail Camp. It's where people want to go and spend a couple, three nights, maybe two nights. Uh, whatever you do, if you're going to not filter, you filter that water maybe twice. Too much people living around it. Uh, this is the start of the switchback area. You, in your Trail Camp, you can look up and you can see. 97, not 99, 97 switchbacks. I'll count them right now if you want. But there they are. And then there's the cables and the water that you were talking about. It's right there. Right, Vince? Yeah, yes. This is the rock that this snow over here comes out of and then it crosses the trail, it crosses the trail, it crosses the trail. But that's what comes out of it right there. Then when you get to the cables, Right here. Yes. Oh, well, before you get to the cables, you'll never ever see this because that rock tipped away. 
it, it, it fell over in its face. So it's not But it was right point. next to those. You might see those. They used to shoot arrows back in those days, too. This is the, these are the cables right here. Cable, 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 cable. That's to keep us falling down. This is accumulation of snow. It's really bad uh, in the winter, in the spring, summer, even. You can see get icy. We have to protect us from going on down. That's that pond that I say you need to filter for, and that's trail camp right in there. So right here, you're approximately mile six and a half. No, no, seven. No, no. You're past mile seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take the Okay, that's a pike up or pick up. Eight mile marker. Now that means you're four switchbacks from trail press. Everybody moving up. When you see that thing, it's on your left. You see, you turn four switchbacks more and you get to trail press. And this is just kind of looking back at how fun it is. The secret to do the switchbacks is don't look up. <laughs> Say that again. Don't look up. Because you're going to find somebody that's way over there on the wrong trail, three miles up. He's not. He's where you're going. You're going to want to know that. <laughs> you want to pump yourself up, look back, stop, turn around and go, oh my gosh, look how many switchbacks I did. I don't even know I did this. But if you keep looking up, you're just going to get depressed. <laughs> now this kind of gives you an idea of truck grass, but this, that's a cloud. Okay, now watch this. That's, that's that same cloud. We got big. Watch this. This is an October trip. We went off for Vincent birthday after the 13th many years ago. And now we are in dated. Now we are just uh, now we are in snow. It's how fast it can change in October, but yeah. On the trail, snow, we get to trail press right here. 13-6, Doug Thompson, Laura, Betsy, and who is this? Flat Stanley. And guess what? Flat Stanley didn't go any further because she decided she was going to go ice skating after we left this post sign right here. And Doug and I were just happened to be on each side and grab a stop. I said, no, we're not going. This was supposed to be my 75th summer attempt. I said, no, we're not going. Too dangerous. So we all turned around and went back. You can see some signs. Some of the signs are pretty explanatory. We're going to see some crazy guys standing up with the sunglasses on and looking around. This is for the trail that goes down from, from Trail Press. You descend 140 feet to get down to the junction. And there's the junction. If you can figure out what all these are about, <laughs> but, but it looks kind of, it's easier when you're there. Get the direction, put these that way or that way, not the that way. That's where the signs are. When you come down, go up. When you come down, you go up. You do not come down and go down. This is going the wrong direction. Okay. Uh, this is fine. Uh, what you call it? Where's Waldo? Where, where's Waldo? Can you see her? Waldo? Uh, yeah. Now we're on the back side of Wigwam. Back side, okay. Again, there's the mileage marker. It says nine. It's so privileged to be able to have somebody point these out to us and to, to see them. But that's the nine. This is the gentleman right here, Mr. Bob Rockwell. And this is the trail as you come down. I love the way they were in purple, purple together. Flowers. Uh, um, sky pilot. Alpen. Uh, Sierra Primrose. Okay, this is one of those openings. They follow the windows. You can look down. You can see way down there. This is to just give you some. Hint. Some people are concerned that the trail gets a little too narrow in these places. That's how wide it is. Look at that. That's a double arm cross. Went right there. So this will down, down 2,000 feet this way, 2,000 feet down that way. Just don't look. Okay. Uh, looking back towards. Colonel River is right here. Timberline, Guitar Lake is right there. Guitar Lake is right there. Looks like in whipped cream or something. Marshmallow. 
10 mile markings, or we're getting close now. We're getting really close. And then you might hit a snowfield. This year you will not, but you might hit a snowfield. Guess what happens when you walk in the way up? Make a track, get it? Now when you're coming around the corner, this is called Wales Lake. Just, just look at the beauty which you encountered up here. This is for the Wales Lake. And looking back down the trail where we came, that's not here. And then you get around, you might get a cloud that comes up. It's okay. It's just not going to hurt anybody. That's the hut. We said built in 1909. This is the door that you can go in. It's still there. And here's this part of it. The other side is not. That's a registry that you sign in on right there. Oh, skip this guy. Oh, that's, there's a uh, garment. That's looking back down towards Iceberg, Iceberg Lake. And then, look at them. I didn't take that picture. <laughs> Kirk did. Kirk Wendler did. She's climbing. He's doing it. That's, here's a, oh, this is fun. This is my 50th summit. You know, this is just fun. People, half of them have been on the mountain before. And this is our family picture of our daughter, Amber, and the son, Jeff Curtis, our oldest son, J.J. Davis. And Dad, that was a really great night. Next time, don't call me, I'll call you. <laughs> That's been on me about 20 years ago, that was, so it's called since. Where's Curtis right here? But I want to point this out. If you look, right, this is Owens Valley, and that's actually Owens River. But look over there, see that, that's the cross or the ice on that? That's called Lake Tuliano. Lake Tuliano is the highest water in the United States. And Betsy always wanted to remind me to say, remember to tell him it's high, it's fresh water. And I said, well, what do you think of the salt water? So, fresh water is right there. This is Rob Belusky. He was the backcountry ranger forever. A great, great friend. You can see the icicles coming off the top. Oh, lovely couple. Oh, there they are. This is our 50th man anniversary. Uh, and that's Kurt Wedberg. Like I said, if you don't draw blood, it's not a very good hike for you. Now, yeah. yeah. Map of uh, this kind of you can get in the store. You go on the Midpole store, you can get this map. It's got this stuff on it that we're going to give you if you want one. These are some of the sites. There's so many different sites. This is the one we just talked about. This is the store site. And then there's, oh, and then we have a, we do have a website. I mean, if any of you want to get in touch with us directly, happy to talk to you on phone, email, whatever, any questions. So Crazy Jack open website. And that's it. That's it. How many do we have any questions? No questions. Yeah. How are apps like uh Ultra I'm sorry? Apps like Ultra using the more fun. You don't really need it. What's the question? Yeah. How are apps like Mall Trails, you know, downloading it? Oh, well, I'm sure they are. I'm just, I'm so old school, all I like to do is read them now. I'm sure they are. Which gen? Yeah, you what's the best month to go? The best month to go. Well, it depends on if you're a winter person, probably January. If you're a summer person, I would say July, August, or September. So what happens now, though, is we just had it in L.A. We just had some thunderstorms, monsoon, moisture. Monsoons come up to the, up the width, definitely. <coughs> and that's not a good time to be on the mountain, but it, it may not be death. I mean, it could be, we've hiked it in the rain before. As long as there's a little lightning imminent, uh, we're fine. Uh, hiking in some fluffy snow, hiking in the veil. But I, I like I like July and August. Usually, and so does everybody else. It's hard to hard to find hard to get a permit. Hard to get a permit. The permit is required from May one to November one. After that, from November back to May, it's a self issue No quota. But you have to be knowledgeable enough to hike in that kind of environment. With grand bonds and everything with size axes. What you need. Any other questions? Yes. 
have you done the overnight camping or what do you recommend as a campsite? I would recommend trail camping. Trail camping. If you're going to haul that what stuff. Was, what was the question? The, the question was, have you done an overnight campsite? I will answer the first part and say no. Okay. Always done it in the day. But I've watched enough overnight people to know uh, kind of what's involved there. Limit what you take because it's a long six miles to, up to get there. Two nights really worth, I think, you worth the best because you can you can leave the day maybe around noon if you want to, or the morning, get to that six mile marker, set up camp, spend the night, get up, and you have all day to go up and back down. And the next morning you get up and you pack all that stuff back up and you sit back down. Uh, but I think if you're going to haul it, you can't camp at, at Alco's camp. But that's only what, you know, three and a half. It's not six. If you're going to go to the trouble to carry it. I think trail camp is the best. So, and what, so trail camp is the best. Give you your recommendation. I sec the second camp. So there's only two, right? It's something they call it the high camp. Second yeah. Plus you can see the switchbacks and you can just... You, you, you know where you're at, but I think it's, it's the best. There's only two places to camp. You can't plant camp along by lake, right? No, but technically you can camp at Consultation Lake, but it's not on the trail. You have to know how to get over to Consultation Lake to do that. And a lot of people will get an overnight permit, and it says on there, one night. Well, no, 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 no. You can stay up to two weeks. All you need to do is tell them, I want more than one night. So I have people say, well, I've got to get out of here. I'm not, I'm not. I get tomorrow and i got to get out. So why? They said, oh, it says one night. No. I, that permit is good for up to two weeks. But you are required to use wag vents. So we need to factor them in. If you're planning multiple nights, you need to do more than one Anyone know what a wag bag is? Can I explain the thought? Yeah. It's for number two, not number one. Any other questions? Yes? When did they take the shoulder from it? Oh, well, they took them out, oh, maybe 10 years ago or so. Probably 15 years ago. Maybe more. The reason they took them out is because they became very unsafe for the people to come in and clean them out. And then, believe it or not, there was vandals who were vandalizing them. Like, really? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, there was <laughs> There was two. There was, what? And there used to be a, a hole up at the top with, with a little seat. That was called the highest, <coughs> the highest toilet in the United States. But anyway, <laughs> another quick quick story on that one. Lake Tuliano, I thought this was really interesting. Because years ago, they used to come up and take a canteen of water at Tuliano down the Long Pine. And then they would take all the modes of transportation to this battle, bad water. It's the lowest water in the United States. And they call it the wetting of the waters. So literally poured out this water as they went into Gaza. They used all the methods of transportation, quality, and stagecoach and trains and airplanes. Very, very fascinating. Any other questions? Yes? I know you've done it bunch of times so you're probably faster than most but what's it what's an average time to kind of land? I would say around 14 hours for a trip. 14? Yes. I think it is. That gives you some time on the, on the top. So you know like yeah, everybody's different. I don't do that anymore. I don't go fast anymore. But. What do you do with it? Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I think I'm, I'm still down around 10 hours. 10? Yeah. I used to do it 8. And then when you age, like I aged. See, I didn't start until I was 50. A lot of people call that old. A couple of back then <laughs> But I started out 50. Betsy did she was 9 years old. She was a uh, but now that I get the 75 mark, I think I've slowed down enough. I need a twice a long day just to be stupid. <laughs> when, I was, when I was 56 years old, I said, you know what, I'm not going to get any younger. I think I'll just see if I can make this happen. So I worked very, very hard, and up and back, turn around, and up and back. Okay. 
And when I got back after 20 hours of hiking, I sat down at the portal store and said, never, never, never again. And then, it's funny how your memory, your brain just doesn't remember all the hard stuff, just remember some of the fun stuff. So I ended up doing it five more times until I was the age of 61, twice in one day. And if you think that's why I have crazy jack, I think that's probably it. That's where they set the icing on the cake. But then I've done it also four times from the town of Lone So when you're driving up your car on the road at 1 o'clock in the morning, wave it. So, yeah. I enjoy Whitney. It's been a little joy for me. I did 200 sun in September. And I'm looking forward to more wines. Uh, more Whitney Sandwich. It's just me. Betsy's done it. She doesn't mentor it 66 times. She doesn't know it. 66. Any other questions? Can you go back one more slide? I so I will take an extra Yeah, okay. please do. Please do. Okay. Yes. Um, I also said that you could you stop at the water areas to fill up. Yes. Um, but how much do you take with you, like, you know, prior to you filling recently? Okay, when I start at the portals, I usually start with almost one one bottle. Not the big LG bottles, but the small ones, the 22, 24 ounces. I know I can get that much and get that plus water. Is, uh, just as you in, go in and out this scanner, roughly when I'll create them. Then I'll get another one, and then I'll go to mile five. Sometimes I might even skip mile five. If I feel like I'm okay, I've got a, a lot in my bottle. But then when I get to the switchbacks, I'll take out two bottles. But again, everybody is different. <laughs> he drinks less than anybody else would ever drink. So you need to figure that out in your training. Gotcha. Yeah, you don't want to run short on, on water. Again, there is water, water drink. You also said hydration is good for altitude. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why you want to do it two and three days before. Just one hydration, hydration. Had a really fun experience real quick on my 200 cents. So Doing it by myself until I ran into a gentleman who, in the dark, and I said, Hey, you hiked it before? And he said, eh, I tried once, I got scared for a Trying it again. That's when he so was fired. He was fired all through the, all through the forest. The smoke was there. I said, What do you mean you want the smoke? And I said, Well, if it gets any worse, okay, I'm going to turn it around. He said, Okay, well, you've done this before. Said, yeah, yeah. So we start hiking together. So I'm about halfway up the switchbacks, and I'm just chit chatting, you know. By the way, it's really hard to talk and hike at the same time. And that's something I've learned. I used to hike and go myself. We have four absolutes, one is no talking, no pictures, two, 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 two hockey stops, where the group in front doesn't move over, you give them a noble environment. So I'm talking all the time. You know, I'm friend, he says, Have you ever seen Survivor? I said, Well, yeah, I have. We're Survivor fans. I said, Well, I was on it three times. I stopped dead in my tracks, forget Whitney, I turned around and said, tell me all about Survivor, this is really exciting. His brother actually won Survivor. His name was Vetus. So it was really, it was a quite excitement for me to run into somebody like ran into two guys hiking the highest peak in 50 states in 50 days. The highest peak in all 50 states in 50 days. I ran into them, said hi. The girl passed him up, came back down, the guy stopped me, he says, who are you? I said, my name is Crazy Jack. He said, I'm going to tell you something. Well, we're hiking the highest peaks, well, 50 states in 50 days. I said, oh, wow, wow, wow. He says, yeah, but you passed us up. Yeah, I did. He said, up until today, which is 1947, nobody had passed this one. I said, well, dude, you're on my mountain. What do you want? <laughs> So I've had some really, really fun encounters. Met you guys from SpaceX in the top. A lot of things. A lot of, a lot of Whitney lore in my call. It's, it's been great. John, we need to do the raffle. So I'll any more questions? Maybe one more question? Yes, any more questions? I'm here to answer. Okay. Okay, well thanks everybody for coming and let's hope you win a raffle. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Thank you.